In middle school, I started to get really into the idea of magical girls. Not a lot of magical girls in the traditional sense, but like 2018 Shira, Madoka Magica, Steven Universe has some magical girl elements, uh, the comic Magical Boy and Four Leaf, but honestly it was more the idea of magical girls than was appealing to me than the actual shows. I made a set of characters with what I thought were super unique powers and designs that I was super proud of and obsessed with. Oh Ew. They were not good. Seriously, how is the sleeveless hoodie a whimsical magical girl costume? Also, their personalities were bad, just bad. I decided to redesign their characters to make them better, but the footage of me drawing their characters looks like this. So that's 11 and a half hours basically down the drain, but it's fine, I'll redo it and make it even better. This is Rose. She and her team are all color themed. In the original, she was purple, but I made her pink because I needed the team to be visually brighter and less muted feeling. Her original weapon was an umbrella, which I kept because that's pretty cool. Pretty sure I stole the idea from Eclipsa from Star Wars The Forces of Evil, especially with her purple Victorian design in the original, but whatever, I'll fix it. Rose has the ability to create these beams of energy that split into lightning if she's not careful. At first, she just lasers people. She's obsessed with appearing perfect and pretty and composed, but I'm thinking becoming a magical girl encourages her to embrace her flaws and she uses her imperfect lightning more. I think it'd be super cool to use her electricity to magnet things or even to puppet people since our muscles are moved by tiny electric shocks from our nerves. I didn't really have a huge plot figured out for these characters, so a lot of the more story aspects popped up as I drew. In this world, I think it'd be a rite of passage among magical girls to transform for the first time, and it really gives you like a power boost. You're considered legit when you summon your weapon for the first time because that makes it easier to fight and channel your abilities. Take this girl Indigo. She can summon this inky liquid that solidifies into like crystals that look like iridescent obsidian. At first she has to sculpt it with her hands which takes much longer but then she gets her wand and she can make much quicker smoother constructs like barriers and domes. Her original costume was based off of ice skaters and ballet so I tried to honor that with the leotard but honestly she kind of looks like a bunny girl without the ears. Not complaining because it looks pretty cool. I tried to keep some of the short spikiness of her hair and made her eyes kind of angular and slanted because for some reason in the original her eyes were permanently closed. Don't know what my logic was for that. All the original characters had something partially covering their faces, but I'm just gonna say that magic gives everyone face blindness because it just didn't look good. Like, the mist from Percy Jackson. Like, you recognize the costumes and the powers while they're transformed, but afterwards, stuff like their faces and voices slip between your fingers, so to speak. The girl on the screen right now is Sky. She got to keep her weapon in color, discus and sky blue respectively. A discus is basically just a fancy frisbee from ancient Greece that you can hit people with. She's a lot more athletic and way less femme than the other two, so she gets biker shorts and a crop top and stuff, and I gave her some frills so she could match the rest of the team, but other than that, she's way more athleisure. She can use her discus to throw, but she can also roll around on them like roller skates, like imagine a pizza cutter, and split them in half and use them as sharpened brass knuckles. I considered giving her ice powers, but I don't know, I feel like it's kind of boring. If you have any ideas for cool powers, please let me know because I'm kind of at a loss. In this universe, everyone has the capacity for magic in them, if that makes sense, but these extremely rare magic crystals are the only way you can filter out the magic so you can harness it. You get your powers first and you can technically use them without transforming, but you need to transform fully in order to do any real damage, hence why it's a rite of passage. This guy's name is Olive. It got hard finding color theme names, so I might just make them like thematic somehow. Anyway, Olive has a big stick staff thing. He also gets to keep his original color green, but I took away his dumb, stupid mask because I hated it. I think Olive has a problem where he doesn't think people would like his true self, so he makes himself quiet and boring so he doesn't get made fun of. He has the ability to manipulate non-visible energy and waves, which initially manifests as making his voice really loud and filtering sound. It's gotta be mortifying for someone whose whole thing is being quiet and invisible to have a power that makes them the loudest in the room, especially since he doesn't need to be transformed for that, so it just can happen. Later, he can adjust volume, display sound, maybe even mimic voices. I think that even later, when he learns to control it, he realizes that non-visible waves doesn't just mean sound. He can literally use radiation to make a mini atom bomb or give people cancer if he wanted to, although I'm not sure if that would work, scientifically speaking. Also, he could definitely give you a really nasty sunburn. The next character is named Amber. I always thought Amber was more orange, but the pictures on Google are pretty yellow looking, so I don't know. I might actually change her name to Vulcan, which is Hephaestus' Roman name since her power is from a myth about him, but... Nah, it doesn't have anything to do with the color yellow, but it's just cooler. But for right now, anyway, it's Amber. Amber changed a lot from her original design because her design was basically completely unfinished except for her face. I turned the bunny mask into this cropped hoodie with huge bunny ears that I think is super adorable and I want in real life. 
Amber has the power I took from a Greek myth, like I said, but the gist of it is that she can create thin, almost invisible, and near unbreakable wires of gold. Her weapons are arrows. She doesn't have a bow, so I guess she can just like levitate them. I imagine that she combines her weapon and power by attaching her strings to the arrow before shooting it, making her able to set things up quicker from even longer distances. I think that she can control her arrows the closer they are to her, but after a few feet, it's better to just shoot them at that point instead of attempting to levitate. Who was the team fighting? I, I don't know. Either people who have tiny shards of crystals, experiments who have the crystals embedded directly into their bodies, or aliens. Leaning towards the last two, I've been thinking part of the reason these crystals are so rare is that they were in a meteor that crashed into Earth millions of years ago and got distributed around the crust. So maybe the aliens realize that and are here to collect. Or maybe the government has some facility and is trying to replicate these crystals to make more magical people for weapons. I could do either. I could have a conflict where the aliens motivate the heroes to fight only for them to realize that the real threat is in their hometown. Or, you know, maybe the other way around. The next character is Osher, or Ochre, but I think Osher sounds better. Osher is an orange pigment. In his original design, he didn't exist. I made him up so I could have all the colors of the rainbow, and he ended up being one of, if not my favorite, of all of these characters, design-wise. However, when I was doing this video for the first time, remember that footage that was pixelated and unusable, I showed his design to someone and they were like, oh, like the lilac cookie from Cookie Run. And I'm like, he does not look like a cookie, he's a human being. But then I looked it up and I saw the resemblance. So I made his hair darker and chopped off his braid so he'd look a little more unique. His weapons are fans and he can make liquid fire. Later in the story, he can use his fire to slide on flatter surfaces, making him super fast. As a civilian, Osher is a dancer of some sort, so I think it'd be really cool if all his fights were based off of some form of dancing. I want some part of his arc to be about connecting to his cultural roots through dance, just because I think it hit really close to home for me and for a lot of other people. Osher's fans also kind of look like orange slices, which is really cute, so thank you to my IRL friend who told me to do that. I really want to design civilian designs for these characters. I also don't know how they know each other yet. In the original, I knew that Sky and Rose went to high school together, Indigo was in college, and Olive and the character currently on screen were maybe dating, but I don't remember what else about it and I don't really know if I'm keeping that part yet. Anyway, the character on screen. This is Carmine. He's also named after pigment slash dye. Carmine is better than Merlot though, which was his other name, and it's better than Red, which was his name in the original. He has a sword and his power is to duplicate things he cuts for a certain amount of time. He also has some self-esteem issues around feeling like he's useless. This is only proven to him when he gets his power and all he can duplicate is paper because he cut paper earlier that day and he doesn't know how his ability works yet. He sees the other magical people making like lightning and fire and ice and he's just like, paper seriously now for the final product Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this. Uh, yeah, stay safe out there. Uh, goodbye and good night. <laughs>